Hey there, this video is going to be all about how to start embroidery stitches. There are countless ways to do this and I'm just going to go over a few popular ones and you can pick which one you like the best. The first most obvious way that you can start any embroidery stitches is by tying a knot in the end of your thread. I like to tie a knot just like a normal knot or if you are using less than six strands of embroidery floss then I would recommend doing a quilter's knot and I will show you how to do that. This knot will be a little bit bigger than your normal knot and it'll make it to where it won't slip through the fabric. All you have to do is take the tail and your needle and you're going to have the tail facing towards the tip of your needle and you twist around probably like three to four times, pinch the twist in your hand and pull it through and you have a knot. This knot, like I said, is a little bit bigger, so if you're using only two or three strands of embroidery floss, it's beneficial to do this kind of knot. Knots are kind of debated in the embroidery community. A lot of people say that they're not great to use because they leave lumps under the fabric, and sometimes they can get in the way of embroidery stitches, and all of these are valid concerns, but I think it is kind of up to personal preference, so I'm going to go over a few other methods that you can use that don't involve a permanent knot like this. The next method I wanted to go over is to basically just leave a tail. So you're going to leave a tail, it's probably about three inches, of tail behind your embroidery. So you'll start, and I just like to secure my thread with my finger underneath of the embroidery hoop and make sure that I have a long enough tail. And then you can continue stitching. And you can go ahead and do what you want to do. And then you'll go back behind your hoop and you can tuck the tails of your embroidery floss underneath your stitches a couple of times. I didn't really make that many stitches so there's not much to tuck underneath of here, but you can secure your stitches by just kind of whip stitching underneath your stitches and then trimming the tails off. The next way that you can start an embroidery stitch without a knot is by doing a running or back stitch that will be covered and basically all you have to do is start making your stitch and I'll just go ahead and do a couple of running stitches and this will secure your thread because you'll go back over these stitches with another kind of stitch so if you're covering a lot of area this would be a great way to start because then you can just go back over with satin stitches and cover up all of those running stitches like this so they'll not be visible on the fabric once you cover them up and then once you have covered them all up you can trim off any other tail that's visible in the back because basically all of these stitches are secured underneath of other stitches this next way is a great way to start embroidery stitches that you're worried might be getting tangled up in a knot such as something like the chain stitch or a French knot where you're basically going back down near where you came up initially. So I like to use this, it's called the waist knot method. You basically just tie a knot in the end of your thread and you're gonna go down somewhere not near where you're gonna be stitching. It doesn't have to be super far away, but you want it to be far away enough that you leave a little tail at the end. So you'll have this waist knot and then you can go up through the fabric and it creates a really nice tension for French knots, things like that. So you can start embroidering and do whatever you want to do. And then at the end, you'll clip this knot. And then on the back here, you will have a little tail that you can then tuck underneath other embroidery stitches. Or you can knot it if you would like to secure it that way. I hope this gave you guys some clarity and some options to use when it comes to starting embroidery stitches. Like I said, I don't really think there is a right or wrong answer to how you start them. It really just depends on the fabric you're using and your preferences and what kind of embroidery stitches you're using. Some of these methods work better with other kinds of stitches. So hopefully this helps you and let me know in the comments what your favorite way is or if you have a way that I didn't go over that you think would help other people. Thanks.